wonderful guests for you too. If you watch this as a kid, one of your favorite episodes. Yeah, that's speaking of audiences, look how many people are there. Guys, that's a big deal. Getting all those studios on, people on the lot, getting all those people, they wore their own clothes, but approved and all that stuff. They got calls ahead of time. There are big rules back then, certainly language. Um, oh, don't you love it when she just does that quick? Those are the kinds of things, again, for me as a kid, even that, as much as I love the whole ho-ho, the clown thing. Have you ever seen the uh, movie Quiz Show? Very much worth watching. That's a true story. And, and so this that would have happened before this. Again, a lot of these stories develop out of real life things. So here we are in the Stevens backyard. Don't you love that Stevens backyard? Oh, there's uh, Endora with a canista. Isn't that what they're called? Who wants to chat about Bewitched? Ho, 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 ho. Ho, ho, the clown. By far, when I was a kid, one of my favorite episodes, I will guess for you two, if you watch this as a kid, one of your favorite episodes. Which, speaking of, I learned something new. Uh, I don't know where I was just reading this, but... Um, I always wondered how did I how do I remember these as a kid because I'm not that young but I'm not that old either. Um, come to find out that like I don't know five six seven years I'm gonna now I'm gonna have to look so because again I know it bugs me when I go from memory too. But anyway, they played these during the daytime, like five or six years after Bewitched aired on ABC at night. Did you know that? Maybe that's how I saw so many of these. Um, because in my mind, syndication didn't start till years later, but apparently these were run during the daytime, like not long after the originals uh, aired, uh, you know, relatively not long. So maybe that's how I saw these as a kid. But I'm, so let's go to that kid thing, because for me, wow, did I love this episode. Twisted, but I loved it. As an adult watching this episode, one of the things that sticks out to me the most is um the reality of it so how do i say this correctly as bewitched got on you know back to the loch ness monster one a couple of weeks earlier they just got too campy they got too weird they got too gimmicky okay so samantha in the storyline has tickets to the ho ho the clown show a local kids show and she only had two and mother just zapped up a third ticket so she could go it's a client of Darren's, by the way, which we'll talk about. But um, they just felt so real to me then. And guess what? They still feel real to me now. These early ones, especially the Dick York ones. All right, let's talk about this. This is season three. It's just called Ho Ho the Clown. Season three, episode 18. This is the 92nd episode they ever shot. So clearly they know what they're doing by uh, then. Bill directed it. Bill Asher. Richard Bayer wrote it. It was shot in no, on November 11th, 1966, aired January 12th, 1967. So they shot it right before Thanksgiving and Christmas. It aired right after Christmas. All right. Um, so who's in this? Um, Joey Foreman plays Ho-Ho the Clown. So Joey Foreman was kind of a, um, look at this local TV studio. Boy, I can talk about that all day long because that's where I got my start in local television. Um, and I will. I'll try to talk about it. Uh, so, Joey, he was mostly a day player. He was very close friends with Eddie Fisher. Wasn't Eddie Fisher married to... Um, uh, oh, my gosh. I knew her, actually, in real life. Um, Carrie Fisher's mother. Debbie Reynolds. Holy crap. Um, and so they did a lot of things together in Las Vegas and stuff. He was a stand-up comedian for the most part. That's <laughs> That was his shtick. Look at Endora in pink, so she pops out of that audience. They did that stuff on purpose, by the way. <coughs> oh, excuse me. <coughs> also, we're in uh, we're we're in color now. Again, notice how uh, everything's real super super bright because they had to back then. All right, so um, did I say everything I wanted to say? Dick Wilson appears in this too. You know the drunk? I don't remember seeing when when is Dick Wilson in this. I'm going to be honest, I only spot watch this one, so I'm kind of watching it cold with you. I think that's all I have to say about that. I think I said everything. Yeah. All right. Look at the uh, TV with antennas. Now, again, if anybody's young here, 
Um, there was no cable TV back then. There were probably three channels, and you may have gotten one, maybe two clear. Um, everything was, uh, it certainly wasn't that clear. And it certainly isn't as clear as we're watching it here. That's why they can get away with stuff. As a matter of fact, I think this is the one where Darren's like his, uh, that, what's that called behind you? Buffet? I don't know what it's called in the office. It's trash. Like there's, there's missing knobs and everything on it. If you go back and watch it, um, because they didn't pay that close attention because things just weren't that clear. Okay. So again, just for a little back things, um, again, if you're young, if you're older, you certainly know this, but local TV stations always had local kids shows like this. They were almost always live. Um, when I started in town, I've never done one like as a talent, you know, actor or whatever, but I've worked in TV shows when I started in news where they still did that. And as a matter of fact, one of our new sets was in a studio where this is the new set right over there is the, um, the, the kids cartoon show where the guy was a clown. And uh, it was just fascinating and very exciting. And they would bring an audience. Speaking of that, speaking of audiences, look how many people are there. Guys, that's a big deal. Getting all of those studios, uh, people on the lot, getting all those people, they wore their own clothes, but approved and all that stuff. They got uh, calls ahead of time. Just wear solid colors, no big patterns, no logos. See, they're very solid. They were told the kind of things they were. And these people were professional extras. They did this all the time. So they already knew the shtick and the gig. But, uh, and they're kids. A lot of these extras are kids. So I have done shows. I've been in shows. You've heard me talk about this. I've directed shows. I directed one national show where there were a lot of kids. It's such a nightmare working with kids. It's a nightmare enough when you're working with one or two or three. But I've done shows like this where there are lots of kids. It's a nightmare. Nightmare, 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 nightmare. Imagine where all those kids have to be quiet behind her and not act up, for example, right now. It's just super, 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 super hard. Um, <clears throat> this is it's just not very real that Coho is acting up in front of uh, a studio audience like that. That stuff wouldn't really happen in real life, but of course they're adding to it. But what I want to say about this scene, Agnes and Dora is mad. Tabitha can't win any prizes on this show, be featured in the show because her dad is the advertiser and it would be seen as some kind of uh, illegal thing. So now... So she doesn't have a number to win. So now Endora is going to zap her up a number. And now she's on. Not only is she in the drawing, but Endora is zapping Ho-Ho. So Ho-Ho is going to say her number. It says 26 and he says 12. I remember that 12 too as a kid. 12. Uh, just really good. Um, I don't know if you guys have had the pleasure of having good grandparents. I know some people don't have a lot of families. We don't have a lot of grandparents. Some people have bad grandparents, whatever. But I had grandparents that would be like that, just appalled that their grandchild couldn't da 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 That, it felt really real. This is me getting back to um, these early years where, yes, there's magic. Yes, she's a witch and all that, but it feels real, very real. There she is. You know, what is that? I'm too far away from that monitor. Those can't be strawberries. Tomatoes? What's red like that with all those leaves? I'm too far away from this monitor to tell what it is. But anyway, there she is at the sink, cutting things. I, I just think, may, you let me know if I'm wrong or if you agree or disagree. There's the coffee pot. The coffee pot and the red pants. This this has become my thing in Bewitch Chats, if you know what I'm talking about. I'm stuck around. Um, they just made everything feel so real. Aren't those feet nasty? Maybe you have a feet thing. But those are just so gross, like to wear fake, nasty feet like that. <laughs> anyway, um, <clears throat> all right. So now here is, this stuff is very real. So now, remember, these are Hollywood people trying to make what local television look like. They're really two different worlds. Local TV people aren't typically as weird and bizarre as Hollywood people are. You've heard me talk about that. Hollywood people are just, they're weird people. They're weird people. Um, and so now Ho-Ho's pitching a fit. I guess Endor, part of Endora's spell was that he would be in love with Tabitha and just must see her and must know her. And he's obsessed with Tabitha. Uh, by the way, I believe in real life, there was a Tabitha doll that eventually came up. We know that uh, there were uh, Barbie dolls of Liz as Samantha. 
Um, this is the episode where we first see a Tabitha doll. I'm not sure if it ever appeared in any other episodes. Again, again you guys would know. Okay, so <clears throat> all kind of, there's the coffee pot. All kind, is she going to be wearing the red pants? No, but they're the black ones, the same kind. All right, so um, what am I talking about? What am I saying here? What was I saying? Oh, so in the story, um, they're, they're in big trouble. The, the, this is, by the way, that is a real thing. There is something called the FCC, the Federal Communications Commission. Um, I have been in productions where there have been, they're big things. And a lot of times what happens with FCCs and these kinds of things that are happening in the storylines is they don't necessarily find out, but your competitors are constantly watching you, looking for you to break some kind of rule so they can file a complaint with the FCC that you did blank, blank, and blank. And then you have to hire lawyers and go through all this bull crap. So this storyline that they're presenting here is a very real thing. Now, again, even back then, there were censors and all those kinds of things, or censorship and, uh, you know, people who said what you can and can't say. So uh, keep in mind, unlike today, there are big rules back then, certainly language. Um, oh, don't you love it when she just does that quick? Those are the kinds of things, again, for me as a kid, even that, as much as I love the whole ho-ho, the clown thing, um, just wishing you could do that. All right, so. <coughs> Excuse me, Darren is saying Andorra put a, a spell on Ho Ho. It's a long technical explanation, whatever. I guess she's there to take off the spell. I'm cold watching this, by the way. I haven't seen this in a while. Um, <clears throat> I watched like the piece of the beginning because we have so many lined up that we're trying to do right now because uh, I have a big schedule coming up here. So we're trying to shoot ahead of time. So there's uh, Darren, who uh, this is his account. Now he's going to the, oh there he is there's Dick Wilson I don't remember him how now look we get to see him not drunk and there's that extra who's in everything with the glasses I swear the dude's in every episode I don't know do we ever see Dick Wilson play a straight man before or straight as I mean uh, not sober maybe is a better word how interesting I wonder if that was their first choice. Huh, because I've read that Dick Wilson, I'm there aware, because I just automatically assume some drunk's going to come across the camera. Uh, what does that say? WSWTV? Um, so, uh, again, a very common in local TV to do this. It's really, really, really cool to see. Very, again, if you don't, if you're younger and you never experienced this, this was a highlight, a highlight of your day. And they almost always ran cartoons uh, back then. So there would oftentimes be a clown. Um, which is fascinating to me that so many people are afraid of clowns and have clown phobias. You know, that's a real thing, right? They do horror movies on it. Are you afraid of clowns? Do you have a clown thing? Um, I get it. Sometimes I look at clowns. Now, do you see how well he worked with uh, Aaron? So there's little Aaron playing Tabitha, who, you know, she's a little kid, but she's really good. I marvel at her all throughout this series. What a disciplined little actress she is. I don't know how else to say it. But there, she, he went for her, she went, just because she's a little girl. She went for his nose that actually looks like it's glued on, and he just rolled with it because, see, he's a stage guy. And, you know, there are no cuts on stage and things. And he just moved her hand away, kept in character, kept going, as opposed to someone who might be just a TV or a movie person who would just say, be thinking real fast, oh, I hope she doesn't pull off my nose and she can yank it off and then yell cut. But uh, that's one of the great things about uh, working with stage people is they'll roll with anything, um, I kind of got my start in stage. Not kind of, I did. That's why, but I just quickly went on the other side. But when you've done any stage at all, again, I'm fortunate enough to be SAG, after and equity, equity, the stage unit, because I did professional stage. Um, there's a whole other discipline you learn. You just go with it. And as a matter of fact, you start looking forward to things going wrong because they keep it interesting. All right, let's go back to the story. All right, so. I haven't talked much about the story, have I? What else is new? So, <laughs> uh, let's talk behind the scenes, because that's what we're supposed to do. How aggressive is this episode? Not aggressive at all. Um, so, they're shooting mostly on this set, and probably right there on that same soundstage. It could be on the next soundstage over, but not much. They built that little set, and it is little, uh, uh, the studio. So, 
if I could, that Ho Ho the Clown set is probably about the size of the Stevens living room, maybe a little bigger. Because what weather, maybe five, seven little rows of bleachers. That doesn't take their little bleachers. Looks bigger when they're filled out with people. Um, and maybe an eight to 10 foot little area where Ho-Ho Clown did his thing. And then a lot of cameras in the foreground. So that wasn't a really big set. Um, then they had the little office where Ho-Ho was complaining in his dressing room. That was probably repurposed and used for the same thing. Um, so they're all in the studio here, to my knowledge, right? <clears throat> Ho-Ho's about to come walking in. I'm going from memory. It's scary sometimes how you remember these things. About come walking in with a pony for Tabitha. Because remember, he has a spell on her to be obsessed with her. And let's see to see if they shot that on the ranch or if they just used the studio internal front door set, which would be my guess. I can't imagine they went to the ranch. All right. So in the storyline, all this, FC, they're not saying FCC, but in trouble with the sponsors and, uh, you know, illegal, what, I don't know what the word is they use here, but, uh, you know, stacking the deck so that Darren's daughter could win and Darren fixed it. Okay, so someone is calling Darren right there randomly saying, can you put the fix on this show? Should I win? Have you ever seen the uh, movie Quiz Show? Very much worth watching. That's a true story. And, and so this that would have happened before this. Again, a lot of these stories develop out of real life things. Uh, that was a real true story where someone put the fix on a game show, you know, like the price is right, let's make a deal or something and fed somebody the answers ahead of time, secretly and clandestinely, so that they would win. And then what they did, I don't remember that particular storyline, but there's not a whole lot new to this. And then they split the profits back and forth. Uh, in the area where I am right now, there's a big story where they're, yeah. So that's this in studio. All right, they're, right? Keep going. I'm pretty, yeah mostly by the lighting i can tell but that's not warner ranch they're just shooting in the studio so they never left the studio for all this um someone put the fix on a casino near me as in the dealer uh with whatever game it was made sure that this person won but they were in it together so they split the winnings you know what i'm saying so probably as old as the, the old as the hills but uh in television it's, it's a lot harder to do because there are so many eyeballs on you and the competition is fierce Okay, so right away, the first thing I notice is why is there a headshot, as they're called, of Dick York sitting on the TV, meaning why is there a afraid picture of Darren on the TV? Something must need to be happening. Okay, so um, here's this actor out of his uh, clown makeup, and he's really good. I can't stop thinking about her. I'm obsessed with your little girl. Oh, I think I remember. Doesn't he replace Darren's picture with his own? So, uh, again, I find this. Yep. Boom. Boom. Go ahead. Now go back and put Darren's down. Yep. Done it a million times. All right. So there you have it. So that uh, is that really him? I need to look at that picture again. Uh, again, so there's some pre-production that had to happen. I don't think that's really him. Did they just get a generic clown that they knew they were going to make up to be him? Otherwise, they would have to take a picture. They would have to have him come in weeks early, at least a week early, put him in makeup. Again, behind the scenes things, a lot of a lot, a lot of people think about. Put him in makeup, take a picture, get it blown up. That wasn't an 8x10. That was bigger. And then put it in the frame. All right. So here we are in the Stevens backyard. Don't you love that Stevens backyard? Oh, there's uh, Endora with her canistas. Isn't that what they're called? Does she have them there? Ch -ch -ch mexican stuff so that backyard is really little in real life all fake plants what is that did she say what it was a taco looks like a taco um notice how the grass is all bunched up in cheese ball i pointed that out in the Loch Ness monster one too see sometimes they didn't just pay attention to stuff which goes are you kidding me how hard would it be to uh smooth out that grass now that fence behind her in real life might be eight feet away but it's forced perspective and it's shorter than it really should be uh, to show. But if you look at those hydrangeas, right? I'm impressed with myself that I know what those pink things are. Um, you can see how they're not, if that were real, if that fence were, these are just things you can look at to tell. 
had they had to put a fake ceiling up there because there is no ceiling there because the balloons would go up in the rafters and in the lights and everything. So they had to put a little piece of fake ceiling in there because the script writer had to say, ho, ho, let's go the balloons and they go up. But of course, that, and you could almost see where it was kind of in a real cheese ball way. Um, it almost looks like the wood split when they were trying to put it up there really quickly. Um, and then they're going to have to take it down so they can do the lighting. So the script writer said, ho, ho, let's go the balloons. They fly up to the ceiling and they're like, oh, crap, we don't have ceilings. Just build a ceiling. Just build a little piece of the ceiling. We won't shoot it real wide. So there's Dick again playing a sober guy. I find that fascinating. I don't know. Did he ever do that before? Did he? I'm sure he's done it in other things. But uh, how about Bewitched? Aha. Uh -huh. So you are here. How do you like the outfit there? The plaid pants, the shirt, and the tie. So um, I, I don't remember the character's name. Mr. Soho Toys, whatever they're called is going to bust it. Now, of course, Samantha's going to have to save the day, right? So you can see what they're rolling their eyes. People are yelling. Everything's going to hell in a handbasket. We're talking legal suits. This is really, really bad. <clears throat> of course, it's always really, 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 really bad. But um, how will the day be saved? Because if you notice, these scripts very much have a consistency. Typically, Samantha's saving the day. Even if she's calling daddy or whatever, the whole shtick is... Everything starts out normal. Those are my favorite parts of the episode where they're just going through normal life. and They just feel like a normal family. And then, okay, so why doesn't she do this every time something bad happens, right? You could just freeze them when everything goes to hell in a handbasket. Just freeze them all the time. <laughs> but she doesn't. Um, I got to figure out a way to fix all this. So, again, the script, everything's normal. Witchcraft messes everything out, and Samantha's going to fix it. Okay, here we go. This is really cool. So <clears throat> I wasn't into dolls. Not that there's anything wrong with anybody who's into dolls. But again, this shows the kid friendliness of it. I just thought, oh, this is so cool. Look, the Tabitha doll. Woohoo! And how adorable is that? So again, wardrobe, someone in script meeting said, hey, we need... Two Tabitha outfits, one that aired, they probably wanted four or three at least in case she spilled something or something went wrong. Probably four, if not more. We need one for Aaron to wear and one to put on a doll. This is part of the storyline. So again, this is all part of pre-production weeks before they ever shoot. They have to figure all this stuff out. Obviously, now for, you know how I always said uh, people often wear their own clothes. My guess is that actor who played uh, Ho Ho the Clown did not wear his own clothes. They could have. Bill could have called him and said, wear things that don't match real bad, like disgusting plaid pants, some kind of flower shirt. That could have happened, uh, but likely he was wardrobe as well. But typically that was not done with guest stars. Larry uh, David is wearing his own clothes. Dick is wearing his own clothes. Um, Dick. Oh, well, a lot of dicks in Bewitched, huh? Dick York and Elizabeth Montgomery are being wardrobed because they're in all the time. Uh, but usually the day players aren't. Uh, Aaron was probably wardrobe, uh, Tabitha. And Dora certainly was. I was thinking the other day about her flying suit. We'll have to talk about that at some point. She wore that same, had that same flying suit the whole time. Very interesting. And I was, again, sometimes I watch these after years and years and go, just another thing, see them go, wow, talk about not matching <laughs> purple and green. Where did purple and green come? We know she liked purple. Was it green because green is a witch thing? I don't know. All right. But I, I, um, I, not divest. I divert. I regress. Whatever the word is. Okay. Yeah. This is, uh, I need coffee really bad. Here we go. All right. She got the black pants on again. There's the ho ho the clown, uh, picture. Uh, there's Tabitha. Now, of course, Darren comes home to say everything's wonderful. Everything has worked out. I will start where I began, and to me, these early days um, just felt very real. There's nothing other than the magicness of it all. There's um, there's nothing cheeseball. There's nothing campy. There's nothing really hard to believe, short of the fact that Samantha's a witch. I think they really nailed that. I was just reading recently how one of the reasons it was that has so much to do with the producers, obviously, and the executive producers, and I'm not really talking about Bill here. 
you know, I, I've talked about, you know, the whole nightmare about how rough it was to start and how they had a lot of problems in the beginnings. But a lot of those guys who were nightmares, as typically is, were geniuses. Because needless to say, the first few years of anything in television and series is where you're really setting up characters. I mean, we have seen Liz change drastically over the run of things. Um, and even in this case in point, oh, that's really, I didn't, I don't remember that. All of a sudden, okay, now that was cheese ball. Why did they do that? You know, why couldn't they just do a freeze frame of her? But, but of course, again, okay, so why? Let me answer that very question. Because Darren had to pick it up. They couldn't have just had a freeze frame, short of if they thought of it ahead of time and shot Darren from behind so he's just lifting up the frame. And then all of a sudden, it's Endorus uh, in there. But of course, they didn't think of that, so that didn't happen. Okay, so there you go. So anyway, my point being, whoever is at the top, certainly Bill and Liz were at the top and had a lot to say about it. But even the other people, because they're doing a lot of other things, really sets the standard. And I believe in the early days, even those guys that were nightmares that I talked about, the bipolar guy, the guy, William Froge, Bill Froge, who said, I just had to get out of there because there were so many problems with Dick and Liz, his words, not mine. Um, these are the people who really set that tone and will say in a script reading, no, no, that's too far out. That's too campy or that's too unrealistic. Let's try to keep this real of them really struggling with Samantha being a witch living in the mortal world. Let's not go way out in left field with this bizarro stuff. And that's how you get the tone. And because, I'll leave you with this, I've talked about this behind the scenes things, because they went through uh, executive producers and producers like a revolving door, and because those people have so much to say about the tone, that's why when you watch Bewitched, you're go, you say, you start to say, wait, what's this? Why are they doing that? That makes no sense. Why are they getting so campy? Why are they getting so weird, is how I would say it. Why did it, why did it have to get weird? Why couldn't it just have stayed so realistic like this one? So I'm curious to see what you think about it. Maybe you don't think they got weird. To me, um, pretty much when Dick Sargent came on, having nothing to do with Dick Sargent, by the way, they just started getting weird. They just started getting weird to the point where they're not as enjoyable. Ironically, a lot of people will say, and I'll leave you with this, um, I didn't like it once Dick Sargent came on. Now, I, I'd like you to really think about this. Did you not like it when Dick Sargent came on just because of Dick Sargent? But what if they stayed normal? What if they stayed consistent and it just felt real, like this could really be happening short of the magic and didn't have to get so weird? That's all I'll call it is weird. Would maybe you have liked it all the way through the end? Interesting thought. Okay, I think next we're doing Samantha the Dressmaker, which is another of my favorites. I really like that one. Super fun. I have a weird story to tell you about that one. What? Go ahead. You, if you Google it, you'll find out. If you guys like homework, because I know some of you do. What does Samantha the Dressmaker... Hold on to your underwear for this one. What do Samantha the Dressmaker... I can't even believe I'm going to say this out loud. And the Tommy Lee and Pamela Lee Anderson sex tape have in common. Wait, what did you just say? Yeah, I just said it. Rewind it. Go ahead. You're not, you won't take long to Google it. All right. That's it. Woo. Out in left field. I need a break here. It's lunchtime. Thank goodness. All right. Keep the magic alive. Keep the magic in your heart. I'm out there. See you next time. Bye. I never thought my heart would be happy. But now I'm gone and I'm kind of glad to be